Welcome to Real Physics. This clip I want to dedicate to my co-author Sheila Jones. She is a Canadian journalist and science writer, wrote a wonderful book, The Quantum Ten, and she helped me to translate my first book from Urknall zum Durchknall, which is the most cheeky one. And you know, she did a wonderful job in translating. And the best thing she did was really one chapter about language. And I just want to quote that, that for you. You shall know them by their words. At first glance, it is not easy to distinguish publications with a reasonable link to observation from those that merely make vague references to them. Some have good reason to be vague. Luckily, scientific language has some identifying marks that allow us to track where soft theories skirt around the hard facts. Follow along as we take a quick romp through the dictionary of scientific bafflegat. Calling a theory a model means that it is considered temporary and doesn't have the ambition to explain much of anything. It has no place in, the fun in fundamental physics in the long run. The same holds for a class of theories, which is never proven wrong by the failure of its members. Thus, many modern theories supply tools or skills, which usually means that we have tools but we are not using them. If an approach is set to lead the way or to prepare the ground, then you can be sure that it will continue to do so for some time, even longer, if hopes rest upon it. What is at rest here is progress. If you read that the view is substantiated, then it must have been just a dream prior to that, whilst promising models are actually not expected to deliver on these promises, and candidate theories don't even know what to become. When a theory carries the seeds, most likely weeds will grow out of it. And if it's on its way or well established, this just means that the sickness is widespread. If it is rich in opportunities, it is just poorly supported. Then one can always advance understanding. This is still possible even when an idea is too advanced for the sane mind. Finally, if a research group sets out or heads off, it means that they don't have a conclusion, probably not even an objective, apart from this securing their funding from the National Science Foundation. Wherever signs are pointing, they mainly go nowhere in the words. Toward trends and recent developments are misleading terms conveying that nothing specific, much less quantitative, is being predicted. At best, they describe so-called frameworks. Even if a tangible experimental result is utterly absent, a researcher can still read footprints from the data, while signatures indicate that the body of evidence is missing and there aren't even any footprints. And a really hazardous situation for the mind is if data is compatible or consistent with the theory. Apparently, it is unknown to me that no false statement can be deduced from a correct one, but surely vice versa. This is elementary logic. Sadly, it implies that even the most arbitrary nonsense can predict, after many theoretical wind cycles, that water is wet. A textbook example of this is cosmic inflation. Cosmic inflation, where some laundry operators see inflation as proven by the cosmic microwave background. It is compatible with inflation, but only after a huge serving of incompatible logic. Well, that was just an example. At the very end, you know, this channel is about fundamental physics, but sometimes before entering fundamental physics, you have to call out the bullshit. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like it.